Last Thursday, I had the opportunity to view the advance uh, filming of the screen version of The Antidote. It is a film that documents stories of kindness, mercy, decency, and the power of community here in the United States. It features everyday people like you and me and their efforts to lift others up despite the unkind realities that often exist in our country. I was moved to watch and hear how people acted, sometimes doing very little things to erase the weaknesses in this country. They were helping people who are vulnerable, homeless, very young children, hungry, penniless, and without health insurance. So I was rejoicing in watching this film that so many people are doing their very best to help others. And then I read an article by Andrew Urzipa. He reported that the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for the year 2030 maintain that conflict Insecurity, weak institutions, and limited access to justice are serious threats to sustainable development throughout the world. These dangers are not only amplified during the pandemic, which affects all of us, but further jeopardizes the world's slow progress in achieving peaceful and inclusive societies. I've been thinking that somehow during the long history of our wonderful nation and other countries, it has become acceptable for some to step on other people in order to get ahead with their own agendas. How can that be? It is so commonplace, this practice, that it has become normal behavior for some. One of the most advanced countries and bountiful countries in the world is the United States of America. And yet there are still thousands of families and individuals living on the fringes of our society. How is that possible, we must ask ourselves. It is easy for many of us to say that these are overwhelming and anxious times, they're confusing times, and I really can't do any more. I have to worry about my own household. The presidential election, the pandemic, and our own concerns have taken their toll on all of us. There's lots of anxiety out there. Working to help others is a lot to ask of any one of us. And yet you and I are reminded, though, that this is what Christians do in both good and difficult times. In our opening song, we heard the line, all of creation is still groaning. Indeed, it is. And you and I are called by our baptismal sacrament to do something about it, even in a small way. It might even be only in our homes or wherever we live. So we join hands with other religions and non-religious groups to work together without ceasing, caring for one another as well as ourselves. So as usual on Sunday and every day, we turn to our sacred texts for guidance. And usually today's gospel from from the evangelist Matthew, prompts us to consider what do we do with the talents, the resources, the ministries that God actually gave to us? Do we hide them? Do we try to improve our lives? Or do we share them with others, which is what we're supposed to do? These are good questions to ask but there's more to this gospel that I believe we should take note of. The advice from the very wealthy man in the parable is challenging. Of course, nobody wants to be financially insecure. Many not-for-profit agencies and institutions like religious ones 
invest their donations to secure their programs and works of charities. Catholic Charities in this diocese is a marvelous example of the good work being done for those who have very, very little. So saving for the future, however, is, is something that we all should be doing, but it's almost out of the question for many individuals and families because of mounting bills, tuition loans, rent, mortgages, and the cost of raising children, especially if you're a single parent. Trying to earn money and make money grow, therefore, is an honest strategy for all of us. But those who have no income, they cannot even get started, and that's where this gospel comes in. While the first two servants in today's gospel were commended by the master for making a profit, the third servant was not. The third servant instead criticized the wealthy man as one who harvested where he did not plant and gathered where he did not scatter. In other words, the third servant was criticizing those who earn an awful lot of money without ever going to work. That servant was punished for being so brazen against the master. Libby Howe from the Wisconsin Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America said the plain reading of this text is that the master is representative of those who are unjust in their business practices. He does not care about how the slaves are making their money. He just wants more money. And as the text continues, and this is the hard part of the text, for to everyone, and I'm quoting, for everyone who has more will be given. And but the one who has not, even what he or she has will be taken away from them. How is that possible? Did Jesus really say that? This is not an encouraging message for those who have little or no money, but still continue to trust that God and community will help them get through the tough times. Another way to interpret this gospel, therefore, which was written about 50 years after Jesus was on this planet, is to appreciate that the evangelist Matthew is advising the community not to be like the wealthy and greedy rich man. Those people, we have to remember, were still waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ and they were searching for ways to behave ethically in their own lives so that they would be saved when Jesus came back. Matthew suggests this, they should use their gifts for the common good. Our 21st century mission and ministry is to seek equal rights for all people and it's a very difficult task. It's not easy to counter what is a common practice among some of the very wealthy members of any society. I'm not just talking about our country. Some people still use dishonorable strategies to make money, often at the expense of others who have little or nothing. Further, even those who are not rich but do have resources are called to share their bounty. The heart-rendering beauty of the film, The Antidote, is that it raises up our awareness about the many problems that we face in our society today. Award-winning director of the documentary, Kahane Cooperman, said that, and I quote, civility is crumbling beneath us. We want to emphasize kindness in the film, kindness, not as something soft or weak, but as a weapon against the ills of society. That is a cue, it seems to me, for those of us who want to do something, however large or small, to remedy the troubling times we live in. After all, it does not cost that much to be kind to one another. <laughs>